Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today we're gonna to be doing another discussion video and something that I personally find a very interesting, very entertaining topic. It's going to be my opinion on the unique speciality that one thing that sets each of the top 12 players apart from the rest of us and from the rest of the competition as a whole. So again, it's gonna be one thing that these players really do better than the rest or at least is very unique to them. It's a very unique kind of characteristic that they bring to their game and it's a different flavor and a different twist on competitive Age of Empires 2. Before we start, there's a couple of things I wanna mention. I am not including myself in this list so if you guys want to do my unique speciality and tell me what my unique twist on the on the competitive AV is let me know in the comments and tell me what I bring different to the table or what I do better than the rest of the competition and uh, you guys be the judge of that and the second thing is this list is not meant to be some sort of like hidden cup guessing game where every time you see some guy do this it means it's definitely him and there's no one else that can do it this isn't gonna be like a blanketing statement like that this is more so just something that I've noticed over watching tons of their games and also playing against them something that they they do slightly different than the rest of the competition. So again, it's gonna be more a specified things and not just blanking statements like Leary knows how to micro because the truth is everyone knows how to micro and that's not enough to set someone apart. Let's hop into it at number 12. Guys, at number 12, we've got Sato. A bit of an up-and-comer in terms of the tournament scene, but he's been playing Age of Empires for a long time. He's around 22 right now, close to my age, of course. But he's really stepped up his game in the past one or two years. And I think the biggest factor to this kind of recent tournament spike or recent power spike, so to speak, for Sato is simply because of his aggressive nature. And it's not to say that he's going all in every game and that's why he's aggressive. No, he can be playing with a lot of economy behind it, but whenever he's given the choice, whether he wants to attack and kind of get that first punch in, or whether he wants to sit back and kind of just play defensive game he almost always chooses to attack and i think that's a really good uh strength that he has because he catches a lot of players off guard of course at the same time i have to also point out that this could be his biggest weakness i think good players will be able to punish this always attack always aggro style but i think once he fine tunes it it's going to be a very very good strength and something that's dangerous and you need to watch out for when playing against them for the time being i think it's a massive strength to be able to always choose to attack and kind of set the tempo set the pace of the game and get small advantages through those early game fights at number 11, we've got Tato. And of course, just gonna say, don't pay too much attention to the list. I threw it together real quick. Focus a little bit more on the speciality. I don't wanna get too much in the discussion of who is truly the top 12 players. But anyways, on my list, number 11, we've got Tato. And one thing about Tato that I kind of noticed over watching a lot of his games is that he's extremely well-versed with the obscure options in AOE 2. Uh, now, it's very easy to be proficient in Expo Micro or in Knight Play. A lot of players know how to do that, but not a lot of the players know how to use Demolition Ships, Towers, and the fast imp correctly. I think those are three things Tato does very well. He's really good at playing those obscure games. And a lot of people, when they can't wall, they kind of just roll over and die. But Tato's not afraid to get dirty with guard towers in Castle Age. He's also a big fan of the demolition ship, as is very well known. But he also does make use of the fast imp very well. And especially I've noticed with Byzantines, I've seen multiple team games now where Tato is just going fast imp on the flank with Arbalest, really getting that big ball of Arbalest with Byzantine and kind of just taking over the game once he does get there. So really strong, obscure situations that Tato can find himself in and he gets dangerous when he's backed into a corner and needs to rely on one of those options. At number 10, we've got Dogao. And if there's one thing I know about Dogao is that, man, this guy is well-rounded and is pretty much good at everything. And I don't just mean like he can play a boom game, he can play an aggressive game, he can play a mix of both. He's also extremely good on the different kinds of maps. And he's gonna be proficient on the closed maps, the kind of slow uh, setup maps. He's really good on hybrid and water maps. And he's just very solid at playing all kinds of situations that he's gonna find himself in. And he's a very well-rounded player. And I think that's an amazing strength, especially when considering tournaments like Hidden Cup. And that's why he's able to secure top eight and I believe Hidden Cup 3, and just generally do well in those tournaments where there's a mixed settings or a mixed type of maps rather. Next up, we've got Nikov. And if there's one thing that really sets Nikov apart from the competition, in my opinion, is that he's actually very aware of the different things that's going on in game. Obviously, and another word for this could be multitasking. I didn't want to use multitasking right off the bat though, because I think that when people think of multitasking, they always default to APM. And I don't know why that's the case. Guys, you can be playing extremely slow and still doing 10 things at once, or you could be being extremely fast and clicking a thousand buttons that do absolutely nothing. So APM has really nothing to do with this and not saying Nikov's a slow player. In fact, he's quite a fast player, but the the point I'm trying to make here is the fact that he's actually very aware and puts his attention, puts his APM, so to speak, in the right areas. He would be attacking on the front, but also doing very good defense back at home and kind of doing both of those setups very well. He's also really good when it comes to those Magno micro situations where it's all about that instant reaction time. And he's really good and never really caught off guard when it comes to those big moments that decide the game. He's always looking and he's always ready to react. So that's something that I noticed from Nikov, both from watching him play and playing against him. 
Next up, we've got Jordan at number eight. And there's one thing, man, about Jordan, and this is kind of, this kind of plays nicely into my play style as well. I think, I don't know if I'm kind of the same player. I don't think so. I think he does it slightly different, but he's really good at those methodical games. The games where it's very clean, both players are just booming up. He's gonna do a really nice job of kind of slowing down the game and kind of just bringing himself to where he wants to be. He's gonna pick up the relics. He's gonna slowly wall the sides of the maps to kind of give himself that small bonus, a small advantage without actually putting himself at any risk without actually moving out and taking those big fights, those risky plays. And he's just really good at kind of sneaking advantage and stacking it up as the game goes without kind of sacrificing any part of his game. I remember as well in Hidden Cup when we played in the finals, that game one that we played, he was just so good at not being raided and then kind of controlling that map, controlling his portion of the map that I think that really stuck him apart from the rest of the competition when I was facing him. So that's definitely one thing I'd say about Jordan, really good at those methodical games. And he's really good at taking advantage of those little things that other players would over overlook and just ignore. Next up, we've got MBL. Now, MBL is a fantastic chess player, and I think that sets him apart from the rest of the competition. Just kidding. It's gonna be Siege and Monk play for MBL. I'm sorry. I think there's a lot of things I can say well, a lot of good things I can say about MBL's play style, but if there's one thing that I think he does much better than the rest is that Mangano micro, and it's also that Monk micro in complement, to complement rather, the Mangano's and the Siege. He's really good at just having that push in the front that he's able to maintain and manage, and he's always just hitting the right kind of timing with that push. Like it's it's basically Huang with economy behind it. Uh, and that's what's really, really strong about MBL. And it's really dangerous about him as a player. Once he gets that forward position, that forward siege, he does a really good game behind it. And he knows when and how much to push and what to do behind it. So really big strength for him. Once he gets that position, it's hard to shake him off. Definitely plays well around that kind of style. Next up, we've got Valise, and for Valise, I've got something that every player does and every player has to do. It's in fact one of the most standard kinds of games, but in my opinion, he is so good at the 3TC and constant fight. He's so good at just like 3TC booming and constantly fighting with Expo Army or a Knight Army and some monks. And meanwhile, he'll also be picking up relics. Like, he's just really good at that kind of standard play. I never see from Valise or Velez, however you say it, sorry. I never see that kind of weird or like that all in push. He really feels like just like a standard 3TC setup which is like the most efficient way to play in most cases. And then always just kind of fighting with the army that he has got available to him. And it's a really good way to play. And it's a really efficient way to play. And it's something that I try and do in most of my games as well. It's the setup that I try to achieve. I think Velez achieves it very well in a lot of his games. And in my opinion, it's the kind of player where if you don't try something different, or if you don't try and like surprise him with some special move or some weird attack, he's just going to get the better of you just by playing a slow pace or not a slow pace, but a regular paced kind of game. He knows when to attack and when to defend. And he's a really well-rounded player when it comes to that kind of setup. All right, number five, we've got Vinchester. Now, Vinchester, he's been around for a while, and uh, dude, I remember some games of him. I, I think he's kept this quality that I'm about to mention since way back in the day in 2013, 2014. And I think he's one of the players, at least the first one I saw doing it, that popularized the box formation with his units to keep them tighter together and make it easier to micro and harder for your opponent to play against them. I think he's one of the few that's really started to make use of that back in the day. But the quality I give him, the characteristic that I think sets him apart is he makes the most of his units. Now, I'm not talking like he's got the best micro. I'm not gonna make a claim like that. And while I do think he's very good at microing, I think this particular skill is all about just not wasting units and always just microing. Even if it's three units, he would just try to make the most out of them instead of just throwing them away or just simply running back with them. He's gonna try and make the most out of them in your opponent's base. He'll micro against you, make it hard to pick off even a single unit from this guy. And so a lot of times he can be very slimy to play against because you just don't know how much value those four crossbows in the back of your base are truly gonna get. So it's definitely one thing about Vinci that I think sets him apart from the rest. He's really good at making the most out of his military and hardly ever wastes them. It could be a weakness in certain cases where he's over microing, so to speak, when he could be focusing on other things. But in general, I always see him making really good use of even the smallest groups of units. At number four, we've got Doubt. Now, Doubt, while he might not be known for his micro or making the most out of every unit, he is actually very known for his strategy. And if there's one thing I will say about Doubt as well, it's not just his strategy that's really good, he's also really good at thinking ahead. A lot of players tend to autopilot when playing. Like, oh, it's a crossbow war. They add more ranges, they start spamming crossbows, they just continue microing, continue booming at home, not even thinking about what's to come next. But Doubt always strikes me as the kind of guy who's just thinking about the next step in games, thinking about what to make next, what the opponent's gonna make, next? What's the strategy looking like in the next stage of the game? Kind of player that relies on these fundamentals to be able to win these games rather than those short, flashy and micro plays that a lot of the other players tend to rely on. 
All right, next up at number three, we're getting to the big dogs now. We've got Mr. Yo, and if there's one thing I gotta say about Mr. Yo, it's his ability to macro even when under pressure. This guy has the best understanding of how to set up that late game. No matter how much pressure you throw at him, he's always gonna be playing a very solid strategy. He's always gonna be playing in the right kind of setup that he would want in that particular situation. If he's got the relics, he's gonna make use of them. If he doesn't have the relics, he's gonna play accordingly. If you try to kind of push him all in, he's gonna back up, he's gonna get that castle down, he's gonna get a siege workshop to defend. He's gonna counter attack at the right times. He's really good at finding those angles in those games where it gets messy. He's not gonna have the amazing micro, but he's gonna be at the right spot at the right time. And I think that if you give him a window to go for a forward siege push, he's gonna take it. At the same time, if you take that window, you go forward, no problem. He's gonna shoot a counter attack. He's gonna defend himself and shoot a counter attack. And he's extremely good at that macro sense. He views the game at a very holistic level that I feel like a lot of players just can't do at his level. All right, up to number two now. We've got Leary. I think a lot of you guys can guess who's at number one right now. Again, this is really getting to the top of the ladder here when it comes to these top players. Leary. Now, a lot of players might think of him as a guy who's just an expo micro machine and he's got very proficient micro and that's pretty much all he can do. But that couldn't be further from the truth. And it's not to say that he's got bad micro. I agree with you there. He's got very, very solid micro, especially with expos. But man, his eco balance and his sharp builds are, in my opinion, what really set him apart from the rest of the competition. And Leary is the kind of guy that everyone can learn from. He's the kind of guy that will just do the same thing as you, but better. He's the kind of guy that has amazing eco to supplement what he wants to do. So if his plan is to make use of those archers and make use of those arbalests, he's going to have the perfect setup economically behind it to be able to do that. He's also going to have that really, really solid up times and cast leech times or like ballistic timings and just all those things that let you kind of set the tempo of the game. He will do very, very well. All right, at number one, fan favorite for a lot of you guys. He's been around for a ton of time as well and just kind of dominating the competition. How does he do it? It's the Viper at number one. If there's one thing I gotta say, if I gotta pick one good thing, one strength that really is what I think he does better than the rest of the players, it's gotta be adaptation. Now, it's no secret that Viper's a very well-rounded player, but my his, his ability to adapt to any situation you put him in is, in my opinion, unmatched. He's the kind of guy that just simply doesn't panic. He's not gonna get tilted because he lost an early village and kind of just make questionable decisions from that position. He's not going to tunnel vision on a certain strategy. He keeps his mind very open to all kinds of possibilities. And he's the king at knowing when to do what and why. And he's just really good at maintaining that kind of winning mentality and kind of playing towards this win condition, no matter what happens in the game. If you deny all his gold, he's going to find a way to win using all his food economy or a lot of his trash units. If you give him a lot of gold, he's going to use that gold to secure a win in late game and just breeze through it for free late game win. If you give him the relics, he'll play for two hours and just I'll gold you and make sure you run out of wood and run out of resources. And it's really just everything, every situation that you can present that you put Viper in, he's going to be able to play the kind of best strategy to fit his position. And he does that very well. And it's in my opinion, why he's been so successful over all these years. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my list of top 12 AW2 players and the thing they do better than the rest of the competition, the, really, the thing that really sets them apart. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed a video like this. It's the first time I really talk about this kind of thing in a video. So just trying new things out. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this setup for a YouTube video. And of course, let me know what you think is my speciality, my unique trait that I do better than the rest. It'd be nice to know what you guys think about my play style when it comes to that. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time.